So now that we have some Mixamo animations added into our project for our character, we need to look at how to go about getting this character fully playable. Um, right now, all I have done is I have dragged out these uh, animation assets themselves directly into the level, and I've hit a simulate play here, uh, which just allows me to preview these animations. But as of yet, uh, we do not have these in our level. If I were to play, uh, you can see that we are still using the default character. So um, how do we go about changing this? Well, I, the most apparent step to take is that we need to open our third person character and where we have this, this uh, prototype mesh, we need to change it to our custom character. However, there is a problem with this, which you may be able to see already, um, is that this character is not animating uh, or using the idle animation at all. So if we were to hit play right now, well, we do have our character and we can uh, run and jump and control this, but obviously the animations are not working on it and it is just bound into the T pose. So um, let's look at how to fix this issue. I'm just going to delete those animation assets from my scene. And I noticed when I switched up my character that it's a little large. So I'm going to go ahead and grab the mesh component and just scale it down so it's uh, within the bounds of this capsule component here, this collision system. So um, to do this, we need to create what is called an animation blueprint. If I switch back to the mesh I was using before, you can see up here in the little uh, drop down above where we set the mesh, there's some settings for animation here. So by default, this character uses an animation blueprint and this is the animation blueprint it is using. So it is set up to automatically know when we are walking and when we are running and when we are jumping and it will play the correct animation. So let's look at how to set this up for our custom character here. So um, to create an animation blueprint, the first thing that we need actually is not the blueprint itself, but what is called an animation blend space. Now the blend space is a special type of animation asset that uh, will allow the character to smoothly blend between the idle animation, the walking animation, and the running animation when we have a certain speed set. So um, to create a new blend space for this character, I am just gonna come into the animations folder here that I have for it because this is an asset that is related to animation. And I am going to right click in the content browser window, animation, and then we're gonna choose blend space 1D. Um, there is a 2D here, but we only need the one dimension because we're only gonna have one variable and that is for speed. So I'm gonna call this BS for blend space underscore idle walk run and you'll see that since we chose our character skeleton uh, that is what we see in the preview here is our bound character to our t-pose so when you double click to open up your blend space there's a lot of information going on here uh, but don't be too intimidated we're not going to be using most of it just yet uh, the thing we do want to set here is this graph right here so we have a horizontal axis and a vertical axis here, um, but the horizontal is the only one that really matters for the 1D and the only one that we can really change. So this graph right here is going to represent our speed. So we have a value of 0 to 100 to start with, but we can change these values as needed. So to do that, all we have to come up, all we have to do is come up under asset details and come to the axis settings. We're going to click the horizontal axis drop down and this will give us all this information that we see output right here in the uh, in the graph. So for name, it's currently named to none. We're going to name it speed because that is what this variable represents. The minimum axis value, I'm going to keep it at zero because if we're not moving, our speed should be zero. And um, I've just tested some values and I find that the max axis value that uh, looks the best for 
these types of characters is 375. So go ahead and change that maximum value to 375 and it will update here in the graph as well. Okay, so basically what this is going to do is we're gonna tell this at what values we wanna change to these animations. So um, obviously at a speed value of zero, we want to be idling, not in this T-pose. So if we look down here at the asset browser, we can see all the animations that we brought in for this character. So we have our happy idle right here. So I can just drag this out to a value of zero on my graph. And now you'll see that the character is playing the idle animation. So we want to then, if we run just a little bit, or if we press forward slightly, if we were using a gamepad or something like that, we would want this character to walk. So the next one I'm gonna drag in is the walking animation, and I'm gonna put it at a value of about 100. So I drag it in to approximately that value, but if I click on this point on the graph here, we can see the exact value right here, and we can change it to be exactly 100 if we need to. So um, the cool thing now is that if you read right here, it says hold control to set the preview point. So basically, if we hold control and slide this X around on the line here, we can see a preview of how it's going to blend when the speed reaches these values. So we do have one more to put in here. So let's pull in our running animation and let's set it over to 375. Okay, so now if we hold control, we can see that it is smoothly interpolating between the, the idle stance, the walk stance, and then eventually the run animation. So we have all of those smoothly blended together. Pretty cool. Okay, that is all we need to do to create our 1D blend space. So go ahead and hit save and close that out. So uh, now it is a question of what to do with this asset. Well, this asset needs to go in what is called an animation blueprint. So in this same folder, what I'm going to do is right click, go to animation and create a new animation blueprint. It's going to ask you what skeleton you want to use. Of course, we want our custom character skeleton. So we're going to then select that and hit create. I'm gonna name this ABP for animation blueprint and whatever your character's name is. I forget what his name was supposed to be. Okay, so let's double click to open this up. So this is our animation blueprint editor. It looks somewhat similar to our other blueprint graph editors, but you'll notice we have a, you know, a different sort of system here in the middle. So this output pose will be the uh, result of whatever we plug into this node right here. So um, in order to get this character animated properly via a blueprint, we need to add a new state machine right here. And a state machine is just a node that we can click into and edit that will handle um, how, how the character is um, transitioning between states and what state the character is in with regards to this animation. So let's right click on the graph and type in state machine and you'll get this result here that says add new state machine. So go ahead and click to add that. Um, we can name it whatever we want, default, locomotion, whatever you like. I'm just gonna name mine default and I'm gonna plug the output pose into the input for the animation graph. So if we were to compile now, nothing would happen because this state machine is currently empty. So let's double click to open it up. And you can see here, this is our entry node here. So we need to build basically a, an event graph of sorts off of this uh, in order to drive the animation here. So um, the first thing I want to do is get this blend space that I just made into my state machine. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna drag off this pin and I'm going to add a new state. I'm gonna call this state idle walk run. Um, and this is going to handle the entirety of this blend space. So to get this working, uh, we need to just double click to get into the idle walk run state. And here we have an output animation pose as well. So all we need to do is drag in this blend space and connect these pins. 
So now um, we have our blend space connected, but currently our speed will always be zero because that is what it is set to right here in this node. So we need a way to uh, uh, to control this speed variable. And the way we're going to do that is by adding a speed variable to the uh, animation blueprint itself. So I'm gonna come down here onto the My Blueprint uh, window here and add a new float variable and I'm going to call it speed. And I'm just going to plug this speed into this speed. Now currently this is not doing anything but we are going to set that up in just a minute here. So currently this is zero because it's not reading this a, any value from this variable but we're going to change that as soon as we pop over to the actual event graph which is right here. Now, um, this is the true event graph for our animation blueprint here, and this is where we are going to drive any of these variables that we create down here to control our animation. So <clears throat> we are left, or we start with these two grayed out default nodes here, and uh, we are actually going to use both of them. So this is our sort of begin play, so to speak. Um, basically, when if we have a animation blueprint assigned to this character, uh, when we start up the game, it's just going to update, start updating the animation. So anything we drag off of this node will happen automatically. So the first thing I'm going to do is off of this try get pawn owner, I just want to make sure that it's valid before I try to update the animations at all. Because if, let's say, we uh, our character died and we destroyed the actor from the scene or something like that, uh, this would no longer be valid anymore and there would be no animation to update. So we just want to make sure that the, uh, the character is valid in the scene before we do anything with it. Okay, so we need to set this speed variable here. So I'm just gonna drag out a set speed node here. And I'm gonna drag out from the is valid to set the speed. But what do we need to set it to? Well, luckily, uh, Unreal has made this very easy for us. All we need to do is drag off of this get pawn owner and get the velocity of our character. Uh, once we have that, uh, we, it will return as a vector value. So the speed, the vector information contains both the force and the direction. So we just want the force really, the, uh, which would be the speed. So all we need to do is drag off this vector node and type in vector length, because we don't care about the direction. All right. And then just connect this float to that input speed thing. So let's test this out. Let's see where we're at by just hitting play in our editor here. Oh, of course, this isn't going to work unless we hook up the animation blueprint to our third person character blueprint. So in the third person character where we have switched up the mesh, we also need to specify that we want to use our new animation blueprint here. And as soon as we do that, you will see it update in the viewport window here. So compile and save that. And now let's test it. We have our little character, he's idling. And when we press forward on W on our keyboard, we run forward. So this is pretty cool and our, already we are almost there. However, if we were to jump over this pit, well, we're still playing our running animation because we're still moving forward and we haven't added any logic to this animation blueprint for jumping yet. So let's look at how to do that. So I'm going to return to my state machine by clicking on this tab over here. And now I'm all the way in the idle walk run state, but I really want to be in my default state machine here. So I'm just going to click up here to go one back. So um, I'm going to pull the jumping logic off of this idle walk run. So to do that, all I have to do is click and drag on the outside of that node and add a new state. Now we're going to have three new states here. One is going to be jump start, one is going to be jump loop, and one is going to be jump end. And if you remember, we have to split up our jumping this way because we need to account for jumping off of ledges where uh, we don't know how long we're going to be falling for, essentially. 
So once we hit jump n, we can connect this to back to idle walk run because uh, once we finish our jump, we want to return to playing this animation. So um, let's set up the animations within these states. So I'm going to double click on jump start to open it up. And um, for this, we don't have to create any sort of blend space or additional asset. All we have to do is drag a jump start into jump start and connect the nodes. Let's go back one, do the same thing for jump loop, connect the nodes, and do the same, oops, didn't mean to click that. Go into the jump end and connect the nodes. Okay, so if you were to compile and test this now, this still would not work because we need to uh, set transition rules. So basically, what needs to happen to the character or in the game in order for th this transition to happen, in order to move away from the idle walk run and into jump start. For this, we're going to need another variable. And that variable is going to be down here, and it's going to be a Boolean, and we're going to call it is in air. And let's change the type to a Boolean. So Basically, we want to start jumping when this character is in the air, and we want to stop jumping when they're not. So for, to enter from idle walk run to jump start, let's double click on the transition itself, and let's just drag in our is in air, and connect the nodes. So currently we can enter this, but we can't do anything with it. So we're going um, to move from jump start to jump loop. Well, we basically want this transition to happen once the jump start animation is almost done playing. We want to start playing the jump loop animation. So let's double click to enter this transition. And um, keep in mind, I'm in the jump loop here, or I mean, jump start to jump loop. So I basically want a node that asks the blueprint, is this animation almost done playing? When it is, enter this transition. And luckily there is a node for that. So we can just right click and I'm just gonna start typing in jump start, which is my former animation. And um, you get all these sorts of functions right here. And the one that I'm going to use is uh, this one right here, which is basically, it's gonna ask, how much time is left in this animation. And if that value is less than something we set, say 0.5, we can then enter this transition. To go from jump loop to jump end, that's an easy one. All we have to do is, are we in air? And if the answer is no, or if we are not, in the air, we can enter this transition. And finally, once we finish playing the jump end and jump end animation, we want to transition back to the idle walk run. So we're going to do the same thing. Uh, jump end, get time remaining. And we're going to check if it's less than um, for me, 0.5 worked the best. Now, you may be wondering why we're checking if the time remaining is less than 0.5, because essentially what we're doing is we're cutting off the animation and we're starting to play the next one before the last one has finished. And this has to do with sort of like animation hitching. So um, if you don't believe me, you can go and, and set it to, to zero or 0.1 or something very low. And um, you'll see that it, it there's a little more jittering in the animation. And if you set this value up a little bit to like 0.5, there's a little bit less jittering. Okay, so this is our entire jump logic loop. However, we are not um, setting this variable anywhere yet. So it still will not work at this point because we are never setting is an error to true. So we need to do that in the event graph just as we did here for the speed. So um, this one is also very straightforward. All we need to do is drag off of this try get pawn owner here, and we're going to get the movement component of the character because this return value is going to return our character here. 
So once we have the get movement component, very nicely, Epic has packaged in a function that can evaluate at any given moment if the character is falling through the air. And that is just is falling, and which will return this Boolean value. So we can use this Boolean value to set is in air. All we have to do is connect it up here, compile and save, and let's test it out. So we are still running and walking appropriately and transitioning back to the idle. And now, well, we have some issues with the animation itself, but the logic is all working. We are hitting all three of our animation uh, assets and we can still jump over. So let's do a little bit of cleanup work on these animations in the next video. All right, so um, we've completed our animation blueprint more or less. We have our character, he can run around and he can jump in our scene. However, there are a lot of problems with this jumping animation, as you can see. Um, so let's look in this video, let's take a look at how to fix some of these issues. So if we look really closely at what is happening in this jumping animation here, um, you can see that basically we're jumping right away as soon as we press the space bar our character is moving up in the world however there is a massive delay on the animation because um, it has this whole crouching down bit in the beginning to sort of wind up for the jump so um, that is not going to work for our purposes so we need to look at how to fix these individual animation assets in order to properly fit the requirements for our game here so the first thing I'm going to do is just to duplicate this. We're going to start with the jump start here. Um, so, well, first I'm going to rename it. Um, and I'm doing this to create a backup. Um, it's always good to create backups until you have, you know, your finished product ready to go. I'm going to create a backup because basically what we are going to do here is trim off the beginning part of this animation. And if I were to accidentally trim too much of it off, well, I couldn't easily get back to the original version. So um, duplicate the jump start, and I've named the original full and the new one trim. And let's open trim by uh, double clicking on it. Let's stop this loop here. And let's just take a look at this animation in a, in a little bit more slowed down. So I'm just going to grab the uh, scrubber, the timeline scrubber here and uh, drag it through to really look at this. So we have this whole long crouch down and wind up, which is really good animation, but it's not really going to work for our purposes here. So um, what I need to do is basically cut the beginning of this off. So I'm just going to slide through, crouch down, we come up. And I think around frame 11 or 12 will probably work. Okay, so I'm at frame 13 right here, and I want to basically start my animation from here and cut all of this portion off. So to do that, all I have to do is right click in the timeline and remove frame 0 to frame 11. So now if we view it like now, you can see that it's much quicker. Okay, so to test this out in game, we need to replace the animation asset in our blueprint here to be our new trimmed asset. So I'm just going to come into my state machine and I'm going to double click in jumpstart and here where it is playing jumpstart full, we're just going to delete it and we're going to put in our new jumpstart trim as a result. Compile, save it and let's test this out in game. Okay, so if we jump now, uh, we still have issues with the animation, but the beginning part, the jump start, looks a lot better. Okay, so the second issue that we are having here is with the jump loop. It is jittering. Um, if you recall, this is because when I downloaded from Mixamo, it did not allow me to download essentially a single frame of animation. I had to pick at least two. So um, we're gonna do essentially the same thing here. Let's make a backup just in case. And let's duplicate it. 
And um, if you're an organizational crazy person like me, um, we can make a backups folder. And we can put our folds into the backups folder when we're done with them. Just so we don't have to sort through as many animations here. Okay, so let's open our jump loop trim. And um, same thing here. So we have two frames of animation and really what we want for this one is one. We don't want it to jitter the way it has been. So essentially our character is going to hit the jump start and when it hits the jump loop, it's going to be frozen in a sort of static pose, uh, which probably isn't ideal for a full production, but for this level of um, learning and knowledge, uh, this will definitely work and it won't look too weird. Obviously the best solution for uh, full production games is to make your own animations, but um, you know, we're short on time and, and everything. So we're just going to sort of make, edit these animations to work for us a little bit better. So I have my scrubber on zero. I can right click and I can remove frame zero to frame one. And that should leave me with a single static pose just like that. So we can see we just have a single frame of animation and we hit play. There is no jittering and our character is now static. Awesome. So same thing, let's pop back into the animation blueprint into the default. Let's double click jump loop. And instead of playing jump loop full, we can play jump loop trim. Wow, well, and save. And um, let's test it out in our game. So he is static, which is maybe not the most realistic thing in the world, but I think you'll agree this looks a lot better than it did before. Let me just lower this down a little bit so we can see the feet because we need to look at our jump end. Our jump end isn't too bad. We may want to change some of it, um, particularly towards the end of it, because you see that if we're moving forward and jumping, well, we kind of slide on the floor, which we don't want. So let's take a look at our jump end as well. I'm going to make a quick backup. Put the backups in the backups folder. And let's rename this guy to jump end trim. And let's take a look at this animation. So yeah, same thing. There's just a little bit too much going on here. When we hit the ground, if we're moving forward, we want to just start moving right away. We don't really want all this recovery time. So let's pick a spot in the animation that looks okay, like right about here, probably. And this time we want to delete everything afterwards. So let's right click and remove from frame 21 to frame 32. There we go, much better. Okay, let's save this asset out and replace it in our state machine. Jump and trim, result into the results, compile and save. Okay, so, now the true test comes here. We can jump, it looks a little bit more natural. And if we jump while we're moving, we don't scoot forward quite so much. There may be a little bit of scooting, but uh, it's, pretty not, it's pretty negligible, I don't think. Any person that was playing this game, I don't think that's what they would notice. So um, this is gonna pretty much cover everything that I wanted to talk about for getting a character. We now have a fully functional character in our game here. And yes, the mechanics are very limited. They're limited to running and jumping. But um, I mean, as far as a platformer goes, that is pretty much all there is to it. So um, I wanna thank everyone who has stuck through this course. I know it's been a long one, but essentially now you have all the tools that you need to finish out this level or one of your own design. So we've talked about how to make sort of tiling uh, wall pieces for your main sort of level. We've talked about how to make unique props and we've talked about how to do a character. So, um, you know, pretty much to finish out this level is just a reapplication of those skills into more pieces here. So 
Um, this is going to wrap up the main part of our lecture here, but if you'd like to stick around, I am going to be finishing out this level on camera um, for those of you who would like to see how I would go about doing it. It's going to be a little bit more practical, a little bit less, uh, you know, lecture based than our other pieces have been so far, mostly demonstration, but um, I am going to finish it out uh, in our next unit. So stick around if you like, or if you feel comfortable, go ahead and uh, finish out your level in any way that you see fit. And uh, thank you again for watching this course.